What's going on, boxing fans all over the world? It's your boy, Pool Kind of Boxing, coming at you with another boxing video for the boxing heads and the boxing minds. Jamel Charlo had a very tough fight with a private stand over this past weekend, and it's good that uh, Jamel Charlo wants to fight. He wants to smoke again. He wants to rematch. I'm going to talk about that more in this video. But while we wait, let's um, smash the like button for your boy and subscribe to my channel. Let's get right into it. Oh, yeah. Also, leave a comment below if you have time. Um, Jamel Charlo, he, um, you know, he had an off night and he didn't look he didn't look terrible but what what it is is you know he didn't fight up to the best of his ability and we have to give a lot of credit to uh, Brian Costano um, Brian Costano is a lot faster and craftier than um, many um, you know boxing heads knew uh, if you go back and watch my videos, you can you can see where well, I was telling you that Brian Costano was going to give uh, Jamel Charlo a lot of problems because of his speed and his uh, feints and uh, getting on the inside. And I don't think Jamel Charlo has ever seen a fighter like uh, Brian Costano. So it's good that um, you know Jamel Charlo. Uh, being the kind of, you know, fighter he is, you know, he's, you know, he don't turn away from any uh, challengers. And uh, in, a, in a time where you see Tyson Fury, you know, um, you know, doing his antics and, you know, trying to find an advantage in the fight. Teofimo Lopez, you know, dro dropping the, uh, vacating the IBF. You see a, a lot of fighters just, you know, they're just not up to the task you know they, they're not you know they're they're talking a lot on social media but what they're not doing is getting in the ring and fighting tough competition like uh, Jamil Charlo and Earl Spence Jr. and the um, you know it's it's just amazing in this time that we have uh, boxing fans all they care about is the the uh, their love and the love for one boxer no matter what that fighter does and all of all a fighter require is required to do or a champion to do is win and get in the ring and fight hard and fight the best competition and that's what we see Jamel Charlo doing and he met somebody in Brian Costano who is from um, Argentina uh, who makes some very tough fighter uh, Matisse Carlos Mazzone Monzone and um you know, the, these fighters, they're pretty tough, you know. Um, so I think it's a good sign that um, Jamel Charlo says he wants a rematch. Um, of course, there's been a lot of controversy about the 111-117 uh, the, uh, card. And that's that's kind of crazy. You know, we, we know how boxing goes. Uh, Chavez... You know, he, he got a decision against Sweet Pea, and he, I think he lost probably every round of that fight. I've seen uh, Oscar De La Hoya get robbed for, for uh, Felix Trinidad. Um, I've, seen, I've seen a lot of robberies, you know, in boxing. And it happens. I'm not saying that it's fair, and I'm not saying this is a robbery either. But I'm just saying, boxing, we know, is kind of, you know, up to the judges and we got to deal with it. So, you know, I, you know, just because you don't like, you know, Jamil Charlo and he got a decision, you know, that's, that is a part of boxing. You know, we've seen Canelo get plenty gift decisions, right? But, you know, a lot of fans, some fans are not going to like it and some fans are going to like it. So, um, it's just the same way with any fighter who gets a, a nod and you don't think they deserve it. But that, but the problem is, is that this is all that, uh, 
the media is emphasizing on because it was a close fight. It was a close fight. Um, you know, Castano, people are not, you, you know, when, when you see a fighter of uh, Jamel Charles' status, you're not, you know, you're not used to seeing um, him do this bad in the fight and you're not used to seeing him get hit as much as he got hit. So it, it just feels like, like kind of like when um, Mayweather and Madonna fought and you're not used to seeing Mayweather get hit that much. So people were saying that he lost uh, that fight, even though you go back and you slow down the uh, film and you see a lot of those punches was the last landing. It just looked like he was busy, you know, the busier fighter, but you know, for slipping a lot of that stuff and actually getting the better, the better uh, accurate blows on the inside. But you know, people bring their their hate to boxing, and you know, if it if the perception looked like a fighter is doing well then you know that's going to be the narrative that they run with so but I don't think um, you know I don't think uh, Jamel is going to look bad in the next fight and I say that because we you, you could see his physical abilities in the ring were superior to Castano's and um, you know he, he could push Castano off and uh, get into the middle of the ring when he got ready. He could circle off the ropes when he got ready. I think what was um, what I what I kind of saw in the fight was Jamil. Something was going on upstairs. Um, you know, he wasn't pulling the trigger. Um, he wasn't as aggressive as he usually is, having that lines only type chip on his shoulder that he carries. And uh, that was, you know, he was backing up, but. He should have been able to read that when he went to the middle of the ring. Uh, Brian Costano stopped throwing. So, you know, this is this is why Brian Costano wasn't uh, dominant because he didn't throw punches in the middle of the ring. He only threw punches when he backed uh, Jamel Charlo against the ropes. But you know, of course, uh, people have you say, you know, have you think that. Um, you know, Brian Costano just dominated, you know, throughout the, uh, throughout the match. And it just wasn't like that. It was like a back and forth, took a war type of thing. So, uh, I thought this was maybe Jamil's worst performance. You know, when he fought Tony Harris, you know, I thought he won both of those fights. Um, but clearly he was more aggressive in those fights than this one. And I don't know whether it's uh, Costano awkward feints and movement that gave him pause but you could see um, like in round 10 when um, Jamel Chava decided to go forward Ryan Costano really couldn't really couldn't do anything with him you know all he could do was you know move and you know of course he got hurt and um, all he could do was uh, you know move around him and um, you know once uh, Jamel decided to go forward and this is why I think Jamel and uh, Derek James are saying they're going to knock him out in the next fight, because um, you know you you know you Costano is good at what he do, you know his strengths he knows his strengths and weaknesses very well, so he don't try to stray outside of that. So, but what he does uh, very well, you know he excels in, and if you allow him to um, get to his strengths, he's gonna he's gonna. Um, He's gonna look good, so uh, and he he was allowed to look good by Jamel. So in the next rematch, I, I think Charlo will probably KO uh, Brian Costano because I don't think that pressure. He's got a good Jamel got a good look at that pressure style. Uh, he's got a good sense of his speed of what Costano could do. Uh, I think Costano you know, showed him that he wasn't afraid what kind of caliber of fighter he was by hurting uh, Jamel early and getting the psychological edge, you know, not to just run, you know, letting, letting Jamel know that, you know, he can't just run through me, you know. And um, that's what it was, you know. And, you know, Jamel had to respect uh, Castano until he just had to, uh, you know, take some chances and go for it and, when he did, he saw Costano wasn't 
that same dude he was until he was against the rope. So he had a plan, a game plan. And uh, I think now he knows better. He's uh, made, I think he can make the adjustments. I'm interested to see what kind of adjustments Jamel Charlo make. I'm interested to see what kind of adjustments um, Brian Costano make. And I think the next fight is going to be lit. You know, these are the kind of boxing matches that we need uh, to keep the box, to keep boxing exciting and the sport, you know, moving forward. Um, all the trolling and the, you know, uh, trying to stay relevant and clout chasing, you know, this, this stuff here makes you, just makes you dislike these other boxers, you know, because, you know, they're trying to gain prominence with their mouth instead of, uh, you know, fighting in the ring. So, but that's all I got, you know. You know, smash that like button for your boy and um, subscribe to my channel and leave a comment below, man. You know what I mean? Uh, so we could chop it up and, um, you know, this has been pool kind of boxing. You know, I'll see you guys in the next one. And remember what I say. Law don't go right here, law dog. You're savvy. See you in the next one. Bye.